so hello everyone so today i'll talk about uh, the how we get the mfccs okay and the meter male filter beds so in the last lecture i have explained uh, how we get the uh, from from time domain representation of any audio or speech how we get the male spectrogram how do initially the uh, fourier transformation uh, we get the spectral uh, representation of the time domain audio or speech data and then we do uh, apply some uh, you know uh, uh, male scaling of the uh, frequencies and then we get the male spectrogram and in the male spectrogram we get the representation uh, of the frequencies how the frequencies exchanges over time and uh, the contribution of the each of the frequencies and the, the color composition uh, gives us an indication of the amplitude okay the loudness at that uh, particular time instance or the and the patterns tells are the formats now so so this is the uh, complete uh, the overview of male spectrogram so we have the waveform so initially we have the Uh, wave forms then we do some windowing or framing then fft short term fourier transformation whatever you or fourier transformation you apply then we do apply some new filter filter banks and then we get the main spectrum so i uh, today i'll uh, specifically talk about the how we get the mfccs male frequency sepstrom coefficient what is sepstrom i have already uh, um, explained in my uh, previous uh, lecture so the basic difference is that after the uh, fourier transformation here we apply male filter bands okay then we do some logarithmic transformations and then uh, discuss cosine transformation or inverse fourier transformation and then we get the mfcc now what is that this is the main part okay after the fourier transformation this is the main part that we do in case of uh, male frequency uh, sepstrom coefficient to get the male frequency sepstrom coefficients and this is also the one of the important parts or steps so just look at here so say for example this is the complete speech of say for 0.1 or say 1 sec or 1 sec okay and this is the amplitude okay so for a just small segment you can see how the m time i mean amplitude is varying throughout the small time instant okay let's so up t and this t now in case of male when we get the male spectrogram okay so this this is basically the spectrogram is not a male scaling is not been done so this is the spectrogram so you get the the uh, frequencies uh, so sorry this is the frequencies and this is the uh, power of each of the frequencies okay so the power spectrum basically so as you can see over here uh, you get a continuous changing over uh, different frequencies this the plot so from this plot we can get an idea about how the what the contribution of the of the frequency so here this one format you can get so one another, another format this another format this is another format so these are the formats and based on the format we i have already mentioned that we can uh, we can distinguish different uh, between different vowels and consonant sounds now once we do apply uh the male filtering filter banks or to the frequencies now why do we require male filter banks okay what is the male filter banks why it is required now see uh the frequencies so say uh, the human auditory system based on the human auditory system you know that we can hear up to 10 hertz to 20 kilohertz okay now the question is that you know 
for lower frequencies our hear, human hearing system is more sensitive towards the lower frequencies for the lower frequencies we can very easily distinguish between the different frequencies say for example sa re ga ma pa all this um, the sargams so we can very easily distinguish between them but if it would be say for example if, if the frequencies would be say for example uh, 10000 hertz for sa uh, 11000 hearts for re in that case it it would be very difficult for human hearing system to distinguish between the the notes as because the frequencies are not that high so it is around 100 to 150 hertz for sa similar for say 150 to 180 something like that so so in case of lower frequency zones uh, we can easily distinguish so based on that it is been find that okay that for lower frequency zones the frequencies can be easily distinguished but once it goes high we cannot distinguish it that easily and uh, say for example 1000 hertz and 11000 hertz they both uh, uh, you know come similar in case of hearing okay so in that basis it is been found that there is a logarithmic uh, relationship between the original frequencies the frequencies in nature and the uh, the way we hear okay and this is called mel i mean based on that mel scaling is done okay so uh, given any frequency we can convert it into mel scale is multi- by multiplying with uh, it is a 2595 2595 into log of 1 plus 1 uh, f by 500 so this is the formula so given any frequency based on this formula we can get the male corresponding male frequency okay so higher the value of f more similar consecutive m you will get okay so there was a cell logarithmic relationship now if you do convert all the frequencies to is corresponding male frequencies then we will get a uh, you know the spectral uh, the power representation i mean uh, power spectrum the male power spectrum will be kind of a smooth curve this kind of it will kind of smooth curve okay so here you can see over here so this is the uh, after applying the uh, male scaling okay the normal spectrogram to uh, male spectrogram and if you get the power spectrogram male power uh, after after doing the male scaling kind of like this okay now how it is been designed that uh, if you if you think about the how we hear any sound so this our ear here is a ear drum and this is the litter part okay now this is called base there is exists a basilar membrane basilar membrane and the initial part is called the external or external auditory mem auditory canal okay and this is a basilar membrane now in the basilar membrane uh there exists say for uh, around uh, 15k you know uh, the sensory hearing cells around 15k hearing cells now these hearing cells these hearing cells or nerves are, re- are responsible for our hearing uh, a frequency between 10 uh, 20 hertz to 20 kilohertz now it has been found that the inish uh, the the freq- i mean if you divide the the basilar membrane in two parts then we see that the the uh, each of these cells in this of the basilar membrane uh, correspond to a specific frequency only but although it it also give response i mean for the it nearby frequency also but for a specific frequency it uh, you know uh, it gives a higher Uh, importance okay higher information it gather from the specific frequency each of the uh, this uh, the sensory cells okay hearing cells 
now based on that say, uh, we have different male filter banks triangular male filter banks okay so these are also been designed in such a way that that for a specific frequency it it responds in high okay for a specific frequency but also for the nearby frequencies also it gives some weighted response i mean though it is from lesser than the it middle part middle section okay so let me just show you how uh, i mean how the mfc uh, this male filter banks looks like okay so here is an example so as you can see this is the frequencies to 1000 to 2000 so the highest response it gets in uh, 1263 this frequency okay so the if if you divide the y axis into some weights so here it is highest however in the nearby uh, frequencies as well so there exists some some less than one weights okay now as you can see over here the width of the of uh, this triangular male filter are becoming higher and higher okay that basically means for this specific reason you know here the the filter banks with this lesser okay that basically means that at as i was talking about that for the lower frequency region okay zone the 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 frequencies are well distinguishable so that's why uh, this range is lesser whereas for higher frequency zone i mean regions the Uh, as the frequencies value keeps on getting higher and higher the higher frequencies are not as well distinguishable as compared to that with the lower frequency the corresponding low lower frequency that's why for this uh, this width is getting higher and higher so and is a middle uh, part where the higher this uh, is response is highest okay now so it is a corresponding male frequencies okay and these are um, normal frequencies in the corresponding male frequencies okay so see based on the corresponding male frequencies this is the male frequency substitution coefficient plot you are getting so from the male spectrogram it was very easily we could have you know very easily distinguish the different frequency uh, 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 based on the formulas different phonemes but here you cannot get any idea about how i mean um, what formats are there and not okay so based on the plot visual plot of mfcc it is not well distinguishable or it is you cannot get any assumption of what are the phonemes uttered by the speech, what is the content of the speech okay and this is the corresponding uh, the uh, spectral representation now however however in case of uh, speech recognition um, most uh, or speaker identification verification mostly mfccs are used uh, all the male spectrogram definitely they are widely in use but mfcc are also used okay it gives high accuracy now one of the reason is uh, reason behind it once we do the male frequencies uh, represent i mean transformation of the the normal spectrogram to mfcc so now see mfcc you cannot direct, just applying male filter banks on the uh, this spectrogram we do not get the mfcc for that purpose we have to do another operation that i have already shown that is the discrete cosine transformation or inverse fourier transformation okay then only you get the mfcc and the frequencies i have already mentioned that is not it do not be in as frequency but frequency okay and the y axis is the absolute power it is mentioned in my earlier lecture now apart from that there are also two other uh, representation of the mfcc it's called delta mfcc and delta delta mfcc so what is the delta mfcc and delta delta mfcc let me just give a idea about it now what is happening what will happen so for example that uh, 
if you have a spectrogram and the formants is say for example something like a car for spectrogram for spectrogram say it is a kind of a car now if you if the fun I, let's say i'm representing the function in terms of f of t okay so now if you, if we do df u f of t with respect to dt this first order differentiation of the function f dash t then you know initially we'll get high slope then it will be zero because it's parallel to the x axis then it will start negative okay so it is it is something like initially we have some high value then it just keeps on becoming low and low and at this particular t equal to k you will get what zero and it will keeps on getting negative okay so say the plot is something like this something. okay now if you will do the second order uh, differentiation of this function so it will be f dash of dash dash of t so in that case you will get c so for this function so uh, it is highly negative so you will get some negative value negative 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 and here so negative slope is lesser and at this point maybe you will get a zero somewhere here now you just look at here at this point of time you get f of t equal to k now at this point as because it is parallel to the x axis so here d f of t of k at t of t is equal to 0 now in this particular part you can see that d of d of t d of f of t equal to k dt is equal to some negative value now this negatively indicates that uh, second order part of differentiation of this f of t indicates that the point which i have we have crossed was the maximum okay okay so these two things gives us an idea about the slope and trajectory okay the curvature basically and this helps us in identifying how what kind of pattern it was in case of male spectrum okay based on the formats pattern the same thing we can do for mfcc as well okay and that helps us in getting idea about say for example the the shape of the uh, uh, the function okay so if you if you uh, think for if you, you think that uh, this male uh, the formats are nothing but a function some curve the way we are getting the first order and second order differentiation this gives us an idea about the pattern of the uh, formats and based on that we can get an idea about uh, so we can also uh, distinguish between different phoneme. Now that same thing we can apply for MFCC as well. Okay. So that is the first order differentiation if you do on the MFCC, then it's called delta MFCC. Delta MFCC. And if you do the second order partial differentiation, um, so not partial differentiation, the second order differentiation, not partial. So you will get the delta delta MFCC. Now if you apply say for example 13 filter bands if you apply say for example here the uh, let me just open the male filter bands it is you can see it from here anyways so if we apply around 13 mcc uh, male filter range this this kind of this triangular male filter range and 
by dividing the original speech let's say we get a small segment of it then we apply the transformation Fourier transformation then we apply the male filter brains so what will happen for each time frame okay we'll get uh, say for example 13 mfccs if there are 13 uh, male filter brains and then we get the uh, delta mfccs 13 plus delta delta mfcc that is also 13 okay 13 plus 13 plus 13 so around 39 for each of the time segment okay now if there are total t frames are there for each of each of which you get 39 so you can represent in terms of a matrix so it is kind of like 39 cross t okay so num total number of uh, mfcc factors we have the total number of mfcc factors we have and this is this is the matrix that we can represent and we get the visualization of the mfcc now in many of the uh, speech synthesis models uh, the statistical speech synthesis model of vocoders we get another kind of representation called male substrate coefficients male substrate coefficient this is called mcc not mfcc but mcc this is uh, is a bit different from the uh, mfcc so this is the overview of the M mcc male substrate coefficient Now this male sexual coefficient we often use in uh, you know vocoders, different space uh, statistical vocoders. Uh, say for example, this world vocoder state. The vocoders are used for uh, generating, regenerating audible speech from given uh, speech data, uh, speech features. Okay. Now the thing is like that inverse MFCC is bit different, uh, difficult. You cannot. So once you do the Fourier transformation, you can do the inverse Fourier transformation. Although there will be some information, I mean, you can inform missing of information will definitely take place. Okay, it is not lossless. This tra inverse transformation is not lossless. Rather, it is lossy from Fourier transformation inverse Fourier transformation. But from MFCC, you cannot do in inverse MFCC and get the audible speech. So you can use. I mean, we can use some neural vocoders or you can train uh, some neural network uh, given the time domain uh, speech of uh, the time versus amplitude what is the corresponding mfcc or say uh, if you can train any model like that then given some new mfcc we can get the corresponding time domain representation and then we can reconstruct that is a different thing or if or say we given some male spectrogram if you get provide the if, if you train some model uh, with the pro, uh, give i mean it's corresponding mfcc then once the model will get trained then given the new mfcc we can also regenerate the male spectrogram and from male spectrogram to speech synthesis there are some there are multiple vocoders some are neural vocoders some are statistical vocoders but direct you cannot generate from mfcc to audible signal however the mfcc gives us a very high accuracy uh, in case of speaker identification or uh, audio uh, John is zona detection in music processing as well uh, the one of the main, main reason is that because of this male filtering uh, of the this uh, the frequency domain uh, I mean, all the frequencies if you do the male filtering and you get the specific uh, male scale representation of each of the frequencies okay so that specific representation gives us a very you know high level information uh, of the, uh, the, the the frequencies with who is the data audio data or speech data is consistent uh, that's why the uh, in terms of accuracy it, is, it gets also high accuracy but not not necessarily always it is better than main spectrogram so main spectrum also gives high I and mean, very high accuracy in case of speech recognition and then uh, speaker identification very different tasks it depends uh, from 
application domain it is my application domain application but yes mfc is a very important uh, speech representation of the uh, of uh, of a given audio data okay oh, of and, and it, it not necessarily you can only use in mfc is only using uh, the representation of the speech data only if you have any audio data having some noise having some uh, musical information also we can use uh, you can convert into mfcc and you can also do different classification perform different classification tasks with that so this is this is the uh, importance of mfcc